Verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David is saying that he's going to praise God all the time, no matter what. Whether things are going great or falling apart, he's committed to focusing on God's goodness. Life can be unpredictable. But this verse encourages us to make a habit of thanking God in every situation, good or bad. It's a way to stay grounded and remind ourselves that God is in control. Verse 2, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. David is proud, but not of himself. He's proud of what God has done for him. And when people who are struggling hear this, it gives them hope. When we share how God has helped us, we inspire others, especially those who are going through tough times. It's a reminder that God can and will help them too. Verse 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. David invites others to join him in praising God. He's saying, let's lift God up together. Worship is better when shared, whether in church or with friends. Praising God together brings strength and encouragement. It's about building a community of faith. Verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. David recalls how he turned to God when he was afraid. And God not only listened, but took away his fear. When anxiety or fear takes over, turning to God can bring peace. This verse is about finding comfort in God when everything else feels overwhelming. Verse 5, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. When we put our trust in God, he will fill us with hope, and we won't feel disappointed or embarrassed by the outcome. Trusting God brings light into our lives. We won't be left feeling like we made a mistake by believing in Him. He always comes through. Verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. David refers to himself as someone poor and in need. He cried out to God and God saved him from his problems. No matter who we are or what we're facing, God hears us when we cry out for help. He's close to those who are struggling and will step in to help. Verse 7, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. God's angels protect those who respect and honor him, acting like a shield around them. Even though we can't see them, God's protection is real. When we trust Him, He surrounds us with His presence and sends His angels to guard us. Verse 8, O, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. David invites us to try God for ourselves, to experience firsthand how good God really is. If you trust him, you'll be blessed. This is like saying, don't just take my word for it, try it yourself. When we trust God, we'll see for ourselves how he blesses us and works in our lives. Verse 9, O fear the Lord, they're his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. When you have respect and awe for God, you won't lack anything you truly need. Respecting and honoring God leads to Him taking care of us. We may not always have everything we want, but God ensures we have what we need. Verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Even the strongest animals, like lions, can go hungry. 
But people who seek God will always have what's good and necessary. This is a promise that if we focus on seeking God, we'll never miss out on anything truly good. While even the powerful can go without, God's people will be provided for. Verse 11, Come, the children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. David now takes a teacher's role, offering to show people how to live in a way that honors and respects God. This verse reminds us to be open to learning. There's always more to understand about living for God, and we should be willing to listen and grow in our faith. Verse 12, What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may seek good? David asks, who doesn't want a long, happy life? The answer is obvious, everyone does. We all want to live a fulfilling, good life. David's about to give us advice on how to achieve that. Verse 13, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Watch what you say. Avoid lying or saying hurtful things. Our words matter. If we want to live well, we need to be careful with our speech, choosing honesty and kindness instead of deceit and negativity. Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Don't just avoid bad things actively, do what's good and don't wait for peace to come to you. Go after it. This is about taking responsibility for our actions. It's not enough to avoid bad behavior we need to make an effort to do good and make peace in our relationships and communities. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. God is always paying attention to those who live right. He sees what they're going through and listens when they call for help. God is never too busy to notice us if we're striving to live according to his ways. He's always watching over us and is ready to respond when we need him. Verse 16, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. But those who do evil, God is opposed to them. He works to erase their influence and legacy there are consequences for choosing to live in opposition to God. This verse reminds us that while God is merciful, he's also just. Evil won't go unchecked forever. Verse 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. When people who follow God are in trouble, and cry out. God listens. Even though we face problems, God is listening and ready to help. He promises to pull us out of difficult situations, though sometimes his help may come in ways we don't expect. Verse 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. God is especially close to those who are heartbroken or feeling deeply regretful. He's ready to save and heal them. If you're feeling broken, hurt, or guilty, God is near. He's not far off, he's right there, ready to bring comfort and healing. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Even people who live for God will have lots of problems. But God promises to bring them through everyone. Being a good person doesn't mean we won't face difficulties. This verse reminds us that while we'll have struggles, God will see us through them all. Verse 20, he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. 
God protects the righteous so thoroughly that even their bones are not harmed. While this may not literally mean no physical harm ever comes, it's a metaphor for God's deep protection and care. What it means for us, God's protection covers every part of us, both physically and spiritually. Even when life throws challenges our way, God holds us together and keeps us from being completely broken by the trials we face. Verse 21, Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Evil people end up destroying themselves by their own actions, and those who oppose good people will be left with nothing. This verse is a reminder that wrongdoing eventually catches up with people. Those who live in hatred or wickedness can expect their actions to lead to their downfall. It's a sobering reminder that living apart from God's ways brings ruin. Verse 22, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. God saves and restores the souls of those who serve him. If you trust in God, you won't end up alone or abandoned. No matter what hardships we go through, if we trust in God, he promises to redeem us. We won't be left alone or without hope. God will take care of those who place their trust in him, both now and eternally. Ultimately, it's a powerful reminder that God is faithful and will never abandon those who trust in him. Even in the midst of troubles, 